And then umpo no no robot boy. They kept on interrupting the drama, the fun, the entertainment that was supposed to be. But I did not find any of that entertaining, funny or anything. Because they're both professionals that could have pulled it off nicely. Welcome and thank you for joining us as we are about to take you through a conversation that you guys you know, want to digest and engage us on. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, and commenting, especially on the content. We thank you so much, guys. And good luck on my brother. What's good? I'm good, Hazard. I'm good, thank you, man. You look so tired and yeah, exhausted. Yeah, it's, it's been very, very hectic. Uh, doing <laughs> interviews is very daunting. Mm -hmm. It's not advised that you actually interview three people in one day sometimes. Mm. So I could push six hours worth of talk time. Especially, like, on a normal day, I just don't talk. Um, you don't I talk know, on a normal day? Yeah, like, I know people don't believe it, but... On a normal day, I mean, I just keep to myself. So I only, the extrovert in me comes out only when I interview people and I'm shooting content because I understand mm. content. I'm like, I can't just keep quiet during content, you know. But then after that, I go to sleep. Every time I shoot afterwards, I go to sleep because it's like, mm. I'm Your day's done and you're exhausted. Yeah, like it takes a lot. It takes a lot. Otherwise, it's been an interesting week though. Yeah, um, it's been. And uh, no, ta pulled up on Saul. <laughs> what, what's up with that? I mean, look, he's been um, making rounds. He's been trending, right, for, for days on end. Bekele Beke, basically. Yeah. Like, he's been trending either for this or that. And of recent times, he pulled up on Saul at a coffee shop. He had um, an audio that he had there. And I saw the, the guys that do kind of the everything, everything, SA music. everything SA music. What's with that? Did you get the audio, bro? <laughs> yeah, I got it. I got it. That's what, <laughs> that's what the real company was saying. You got the audio, bro. Now, nah, Nota is going to be here to explain himself. Uh, we'll release that a few in a few days' time. Nota and Penmo, um, we spoke about that incident for an hour. Because I've been saying um, to Nota whenever I speak to him, like, just leave Soul alone, man. Even when Soul was, uh, Solomzi Penduga was here, mm. um, I did say, like, yo, what happened? What's what's your beef with him? You know what I'm saying? Um, just leave Saul alone. And I did even reiterate that um, when Nota is here, the episode that we're going to release this week. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it. I'm coming to terms with the idea that we, we live in a time of content. And I think that sometimes some of these things are done for content purposes. Because mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that anyone was hurt. I don't think that anyone was punched, uh, especially between Saul and and nota mm -hmm. i don't think that there were threats to physical violence um yeah but i did tell nota on the episode that i, don't, I didn't believe that that was a coincidence um that he pulled up there but it does explain his side of the story um as well you know they were there uh they just happened to stumble on soul and i think uh, when he sees soul he tells nota that soul is there so um gives you insight on uh, the nature of the young man that it's exciting to see drama and shit like that. Mm -hmm. I think people, some people just love content and they live for content. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm just coming to terms with that. That we, I think South Africa is only to come to terms with that. That, Yeah, back on the content, by the content, even though, of course, with Seoul, it, must be, it, it might be a stressful time and mm. he would rather not deal with that. But yeah, the content. But I, I, without uh, diluting an auto story, he will tell it when I'm with him and... Um, open well as well. Mm. When you saw the video, what did you make of it? I was like, okay, firstly, Usol has expressed, right, how he's let go of Nota, the friendship, and everything else. And then seeing him pulling up, I was like, okay, is he stalking Saul? That was the first thing that came <laughs> into my mind. We said, okay, fine. It's not a stalking Saul. And for me, even if we bump into each other, right, why would I bump into you? Have my phone, my footage ready for what? You know, what was he trying to prove? What was the content or the context of that particular content rather? Uti, it didn't, it didn't intend to shoot until, like Uti, it was a cordial conversation. Um, but of course, like, I think the rest of South Africa would say, okay, if you coincidentally find yourselves in the same place, uh, yeah, yeah, there's like, no need to engage each uh, other. Yeah, well, so. And he went to him and said, you must keep uh, 
my wife's name out of your mouth or something like that. Yeah. He tried to speak to him, but so the thing is, Saul began am nag. He wasn't saying anything to him. He's the one that went up to Saul, started speaking to Saul, and Saul was like, "Please leave me alone." I mean, it's like the woman and guy thing. When a woman says no, let it be no. You know, so it looks like he did not accept the no that was being given to him by Saul to say, "Leave me alone. I don't want to speak to you. That's enough. What more do you want?" Are you not supposed to walk away? Are you supposed to then force yourself, have a conversation? Even worse, that footage, much as he may not have had that footage, but when he was walking in, there was already footage of him walking in. Who was taking that footage? I don't know. I mean, I'm not interested in that story, to be genuinely honest. <laughs> like, and I, I don't care. Like, from the bottom of my heart, I'm starting to see it for what it is. Like, I... It's content creation and stuff like that. It's a pity that those have... It's like if someone was creating content ab about me, they were just, okay, if I was on the other side, it would just... The annoyance would just be that I'm not participating, but someone is annoying me with content. But I, to be genuinely honest, like I... Because not just... He explains it, like, and people will decide for themselves whether or not they, they're happy with the explanation and stuff like, uh, like that. It's just... Uh, he says, keeping my wife's name out your mouth and stuff like that. And then on the other side, so now it is in those I keep. But I would imagine that if I find myself uh, in a restaurant with someone I don't like, I wouldn't go to them and I wouldn't expect them mm. to come to me. It's a public uh, place, so you can't restrict anyone uh, which you must and mustn't eat and uh, stuff like that. I mean, that's what Nota argued when I, I pressed him on Stogie T as well. I was like, okay, cool. You find yourselves in the same place uh, because that's, that was his argument. Like um, at, the, at the beginning, which I am young and there's a poster, um, good event, because of the event. That's his angle, and that's it. Yeah, but uh, how they magnetically attract each other so that they can be uh, within a few feet is, is something that Nota can explain. That place that is, mm. I mean, we are in the same concert hall. Under the same roof. Yeah, yeah. But, which is coincidentally, it can happen, but mm -hmm. how do we magnetically attract each other so that we are now literally two feet away from each other yeah well um and i think even in both instances it's not stoggy who went to nota or Saul who went to nota somehow he nota. moves to closer to those yeah, people well. yeah but yeah it is content it is what it is like whatever man i think south africa can see it for what it is um by content it's a pity that someone else has to write because i think i uh, because I'm, I'm with Saul on on whatsapp you mm. can see but yeah i'm affected in a way that uh, he has to write cryptic statements about uh, letting things be, yeah, bro. Uh, on WhatsApp statuses, um, uh, I, I can't remember, but it was like I, when he wrote that, I'm like, okay, like I'm connecting it with the video I saw earlier, mm. which I'm quite a relaxed person. I let things be, something like that, yeah, bro. So it means that your life is somehow not life per se, but your days maybe uh, inconvenienced by the one instance, yeah, bro. But I think eventually that thing is going to go away and there'll be something else. Mm. Um, I think, yeah, I'm going to say about content and create why. Talking about content, um, Zulu, Kimang Big Zulu yeah. released the 150 bar, which was a diss track, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you also think that was part of content yeah. or just to sort of revive hip hop? Because now there's, there's, a, there's an issue with numbers versus trends on twitter you've expressed this before that trends on twitter don't necessarily mean numbers accumulate anywhere else where they are ought to accumulate so that song came out ko responded i think he was the first to respond ko questa questa and, and then duncan and a few like unknown people yeah and then like i think after duncan was like Ugh, no like we are more because it that was fun as we are shooting this uh kespanyo is actually cooking one it, yeah. on his own as well. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. So let me just uh, clarify the one thing about Twitter. So when you... It's possible that you could have a video clip on Twitter that has half a million views, mm -hmm. but it doesn't necessarily translate into YouTube views. But there are times where something is appealing uh, and people want to go and listen to the full thing. Mm -hmm. And this is what happened with the instance Ga Big Zulu that... Um, when people were hearing clips of that song on on Twitter, on Facebook, and maybe it was like 30-second 30, 30 clips, they went to YouTube because they want to hear 
the rest of the insults and stuff like that. It's like, mm -hmm. it's such an appealing thing that you just want to go and see the full thing. But generally speaking, people on Twitter don't go, don't click on links to leave Twitter, you know, because uh, they would rather be there and see the drama. Um, no, I think it's coordinated. You can see these niggas are dancing in a way that they've practiced. Mm. Um, and even in the original song, um, they uh, apologize to each other. Um, we are just playing around niggas. And also you see the, the images. I think they went to a concert uh, where they were performing OKO, OK, oh, Big Zoo, Nuquesta. Uh, I don't know who else, but you could see that there was, there's an image with the three of them. Yeah, but so... That's not that's not necessarily the beef that Tupac had with U U mm, B I G. The yeah, east so, and the west. Yeah, so yeah. that's not necessarily that because Tupac was yeah, spitting fire there about sleeping <laughs> someone sleeping with someone's wife. It was pretty clear that those niggas are not being uh, cordial with each other. Mm. Yeah, but so there was no beef. Um, that one I, I don't know. Like I, it was exciting for what it is, but mm. I, I didn't have really any thoughts on it. Like. Uh, I don't know when. Uh, did you feel? What, did you what? What side of it did you buy? The fact that it's a beef or it's not. I bought the fact that they were having fun. Oh, like, okay. <laughs> I, I I just thoroughly enjoyed it because um, I grew up as a hip hop fan and somewhere around Joburg and Soweto, there used to be places where I think we grew up in a time where it was hip hop. And then there was a lot of quiet, or there was a lot of house that yeah. was taking place at that time. And it was very few people that followed hip hop. So it just took me back to those days where, like, you know, a couple of people would be at the corner siphoning their lyrics and, like, you know, having a go at each other. But it was all fun, you know, at that time. And then, yeah, Konanyana, like, you know, some craziness that would happen every now and then. I know, oh, Pro Kid, when he passed on, there was a. Was it Shek on Kuku? Like there was some place that everybody went back to mm. just to go back and remember those days. So when this one happened, the 150 bar, it took me back to those days and those times where people would have fun. You know, it's kind of samakama, you know, just basically throwing words around and just having fun, nothing else. Because, I mean, they're all now established in their careers. They've branched out every now and then to try different genres of music. Yeah. And it was just high time that, like, let's just go back to who we were known to be, you know. So it was all fun. I bought the fun side of it. I never thought it was anything serious until I think I was a bit disturbed when Duncan responded because there was a lot of insults. Like, it just went too personal. The, and this this was like, my uh, observation with South Africans. I was like, yeah, this is the interesting thing is is going to be observing my people who are continuously conservative, them policing what <laughs> hip hop beef must look like. Mm -hmm. Utupa kuti, that's why I fucked your bitch, you fat motherfucker. At the beginning, from the beginning, that's mm -hmm. why I fucked your bitch, you fat motherfucker. That's said from the start. And the good thing about five, yeah, but. Mm. So I was looking at South Africans, observing that. I was like, ah, my people are so predictable. They're going to start talking about <laughs> personal, the personal F words. Why did you use that word? Mm. And stuff like that. So I was, I was not surprised at that. Like, my people can be predictable. I was like, oh, okay. They're going to do that. And they did that. Because from the beginning, mm. they're telling you that they're playing from the jump. Um, yeah, but, and it is, Mose, uh, it comes from the... The word disrespect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but so when I'm dissing you, I'm disrespecting you. There's no limit. Uh, what happened? Uh, Pusha T, when he was dissing Drake, uh, people were trying to say, I got that you crossed the line when they start mentioning women and children. Yeah, but, but then those people crossed the line because there is no line. The line is imaginable, mm. it's, an, it's an imaginary line in your head. Yeah, but, but I'm not surprised. Like, South Africans are always going to do that when people are fighting. They try to say, fight within these limits. And mm. maybe that's why uh, white people can come from a different continent and take our land because it's no bubble conservative. Mm. Uh, okay, cool. You took our land, it's fine. You can take it. Yeah, but so I noticed that um, with us. Mm. Yeah, but even when Duncan went hard, I don't know what's going to... It's a pity that we're shooting uh, before Quas uh, Casper releases his... I don't know what he's gonna say, but I think even the hype has died down. Mm. Yeah, but mm. I think we live in a we live in an era of music uh, where there's something new all the time, um, and there's a new buzz all the time. That anyone who wanted to capitalize on that thing needed to do so around the same seven mm. day period. True. Anything outside the seven day period could have a buzz, but it won't it won't be as effective. Mm. Um, yeah, but so. 
Big Zulu benefited because I think he did something with uh, Nestesi and Pato Ranking. Mm-hmm. Um, he was promoting a single. Okay, O and I was promoting an album. Yeah. Um, as well. If Questa wanted to do a surprise comeback, he could have done it within the seven-day period mm. after he responded. If Duncan uh, wanted to do that, he would have done that as well around the same time. Yeah, but so, unfortunately, um, music, nowadays, that uh, within a few weeks, like we are, we, are, we are so far removed from that. It's like people just do it and then they move on from that point. Yeah, well, so I don't know. I don't know how people are going to receive the quest, the the Casper one, mm. and its impact. Um, yeah, well, so yeah, it's it. It was an interesting thing that they did. It's it was even interesting and and typically South African for even him to say I was like, Shit, I've never heard that <laughs> when people are dissing each other and then they say Nyazala. Nyazala. <laughs> Buffett. It's like, I, that's a tip- our people are very predictable and typical I'm like when I observe them I'm like yes, yes. like in other countries you believe yeah, there's a real beef yeah, here, yeah. yeah and then they can tell us later on what I was like yes, but yeah. not immediately yeah exactly on the song <laughs> on the original song three minutes later you say Nyazala. but yeah, anyways maybe it was a responsible thing to do because because of the nature of people that we are, basically yeah, well, in South Africa, because someone is gonna fight on Casper's behalf, mm. another one is gonna and fight, and then people are end up being, uh, committing suicide because of such. I mean, there's a lot of things that I think, from a point you go, try and calm things down as South Africans. We are going through a lot as a country, and mm-hmm. isn't this teaser? Like you know, you better quickly clean them out. Because there's brands involved, there's bread, there's this, there's that. They won't book you, they'll cancel you because you saw it, whoever. You know how the drill goes in South Africa. <laughs> so because they're still South African artists and still wanting their music to be bought by South Africans. I guess, you know, it was the most responsible thing as far how as bread you, is concerned. How can you disrespect responsibly? Eh? Because <laughs> we are dis respecting each other and playing in the process. Uh, but it needs to be alluded to the people out there that this is where we are. There's nothing hectic about it. It's not that deep. There's, there's something about the culture of hip-hop, and I was raised on it. Mm. There's something beautiful about its rebellious spirit that it teethers on the line every time. But there is no line, but there is a line. Mm-hmm. It's imaginary, it's in our heads. Uh, when it becomes gangster rap, uh, it becomes gangster rap. Although we know that these people are not gangsters, but somewhat when they say fuck the police, we believe them. And we believe that the guns that they have on the music videos are real. Mm-hmm. Even though they're not real, but maybe they are real. You know, there's something about that. There's something about when they say um, fuck the system, fuck schools, uh, in 1999 with Dead Press uh, in one of the most beautiful albums uh, ever released in hip-hop. And they say, fuck schools, fuck the schooling system. Uh, there's something beautiful about its rebellious spirit that mm-hmm. we believe it. Uh, maybe we don't believe it. We don't know. There's like this line that's always there that people are dancing next to. Uh, that uh, hip hop, my culture, uh, you know, I, I may be closer, but I'm more hip hop than I am closer actually. Mm-hmm. Because I was raised on hip hop and I was raised on these guys that. When it, it when when it merges itself with brands and it merges itself with uh, with, with 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 people's expectations, that it, you can see that it's diluted. Mm. You know, uh, it it would have been nice to not know from the beginning um, that these guys are not playing. Uh, but of course, eventually, if they want to reveal that, they could reveal that. Uh, but there's something about hip hop's authenticity in all of its. Uh, waves uh, in, in in its growth that when it happens in the 1970s it's different when it happens in the 1980s it's different in the 1990s it's different it goes through different waves mm-hmm. and now uh, it's been uh, turned into a completely different animal but maybe it's a reflection of the time as well but hip hop I don't know it like uh, you can play around but still remember the spirit of the uh, genre it's a pity that obviously the people that did those beefs you could argue that are young multi-millionaires and therefore, um, it's the same with me that I could argue that I'm not the same person I was when I was 18 living in Shags. Mm-hmm. So I've lost my edge. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so maybe those guys lost their edge as well. Like it's it's more because they are brand ambassadors of things mm. that it's more uh, of a responsible thing for them to reveal that they're just playing because they're going to get a phone call from Hyundai or uh, mm. Ferrari or whoever, whichever brand they are being endorsed by, Denap or whatever. Yeah, but... Uh, and they have to explain that mm. so I, I need people to understand that too 
there's the inauthenticity aspect to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I don't want people to, to obviously murder each other. Uh, I will, I would not like that. But I'm I'm fully aware that this is not what we grew up on and signed up for. But it's understandable that it's being done by people who are somewhat multimillionaires, and its authenticity will always be. Uh, diluted. That's why Upi Kosa, when he did, when he does it, and he comes from Cape Town, is a nobody, and he does it. It's offensive, and you believe it. Mm. It's offensive, and you believe it, and 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 he offends people, and and he he develops a fan base, which is largely characterized uh, by maybe fifty to sixty percent of people who don't like him because he said something about Aries being a baby girl, mm. you know, um, which was very fun to hear that. Uh, Uti Aries is up a baby girl um, in Cuesta why do you uh, speak in a baritone as if whatever, whatever if you <laughs> swallowed whatever whatever yeah, well, so it's offense and it's authenticity will always be it's greatest selling point mm-hmm. but at some point even Big Closer will be a young multi-millionaire if his career goes well and by that point he the way that he does beef will be different the mm. way that he does this will course. be different yeah, well, so yeah so many evolution as I like an evolution as I, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The evolution. The evolution of hip hop comes from the money side of things. It's affected by the money, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I guess, because now Abu Naz, your Jay Z. Yeah, you believed your, it. Yeah, we did. I mean, Kanye West, and still with the Neptunes. Um, Kanye geez. West confronts U50 Cent and they released an album on the same day. I think this is Kanye West's third album, Graduation, and it's 50 Cent's third album, right? Mm-hmm. Even though you could see that it's a marketing gimmick because they want to see who makes, uh, who does the most sales in the first week and Kanye West wins that battle. Mm-hmm. But when they are confronting each other and staring at each other in front of a live TV audience, you, you believe it. Mm. Uh, you don't believe it's gangster stuff because yeah. Kanye West is clearly not gangster, but you mm. believe that these guys are competing. You know. AKA and Casper at some point, yeah. did you believe their beef? It's 2010, 2011, 2012, around that period, and they're not young multimillionaires at that point. Mm-hmm. And you, you believe which you, there's animosity. I don't expect animosity from them now, but you, you somewhat believe which, uh, as Tandani is. And and it literally splits hip hop into two. To mm-hmm. Those who are ignorant enough to choose uh, to live in a binary world. The other group is on AK. Other group is on Casper. You don't even have to participate in shit like that. But people do at that time, um, to a point where they are so disappointed when they see the two playing a football match mm. um, and then clapping hands, clapping hands and yeah, high fiving well, each other. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's a binary world that you live in if you're stupid enough to participate in that nonsense. Mm. Uh, if you're matured enough, you just listen to music. And it's like, oh, I like this song by AK. I like this one by Casper. I like this one by So Z. you shouldn't really be a fan. You must just be a music fan. You can be a super fan. an artist fan. You can be a super fan uh, of a, a music a, a musician. I'm a super fan of Kanye West. I know a lot of his songs, but when he's wilding and doing nonsense, I know how to say that that's nonsense. Mm. You don't have to. You don't have to say I'm choosing Casper, and therefore I will never listen to AKA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, because the the foundation of you loving that shit is because you love music in the first mm. place. Now you're choosing personalities. That means you don't really love music. Uh, it's just that calling into a fear of missing out. You just <laughs> heard your friends. <laughs> you heard your friends say, "Okay, it's like they're pressuring you into choosing between chiefs and pirates." Mm. Yeah, well, someone else would say, ah, "I don't care." Like it's football. Yeah, it's entertaining. I, exactly. I just I'm love not football. a shareholder. Exactly. Speaking of music, um, 28 summer awards took place last yeah. week. And, uh, of course, there'll always be controversy as far as the summers are concerned. Firstly, it was around the production. Did you go? No, I didn't go. I had you plenty of to work to do. No, 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 no. And I had so much work to do, I couldn't. Um, I was actually working the Sunday, the Monday, and uh, Tuesday. Yeah. So I was facilitating somewhere at a summit. So I could not be attending the summers. So with that said, uh, but I got to watch the summers obviously from whoever well, they were across to... two days yeah they were across two days i didn't know i thought it was gonna be saturday because I, ch- I kept on checking the winners on saturday mm-hmm. and i'm like my favorite uh category is not there it's on sunday hip-hop on saturday yeah it's actually on saturday so okay even at the the announcement i attended the announcement where they were going to tell us how things are going to roll but at that time they had said that it's going to take place in pretoria Isan arena but I don't know what happened. And then they moved to Sun City. 
so even then the categories were different so there were ones that were announced by the mc who was lawrence at that time and then there were others that we saw on screen after the announcement was done hmm. so um on saturday it was I, I didn't watch the ones on saturday it was the k-pop like i don't know it was different genres on saturday and it was live on youtube not on a, their not channel on not on the cpc mm. not on any other broadcaster okay except for youtube and then on sunday so i was playing on youtube <laughs> <laughs> played on youtube as well as on sapc one so people could stream people could actually watch it but now here's the thing sunday in a it's got its own thing you know sundays people are doing whatever it is that they're doing but in your points that i picked up from the actual event itself it was the horrible sound that came from there mainly because you could hear when um the the voice over artist was actually telling them to move from one end to another and this was during almost ad time you could hear when they were talking in the background we took okay, fine let's do this no not this but that i was a bit disturbed by i mean i love robocop i love um pop pops but the whole drama i about that i saw there to me it was unnecessary what if you give them Okay, so when when um Nandi and uh, Lawrence were on stage, right? Umpo and um Robert Boy came in, caused a bit of drama to say, Yeah, we are the original hosts and whatnot. It was meant to be fun, it was meant to make people laugh and entertain the people. But somehow there's certain things that you just gotta keep professional and keep it moving. So if you, a so certain were they, were they section, not trying to entertain, or were they not acting? I didn't see what. You're yeah, saying. they were. But what I'm saying is, to me, it I found it unnecessary. So if you are going to give U, U, Unandi and uh, Lawrence being the main hosts, then let these ones take the other categories and then be the ones that run with that. And then it was obvious that Alfie, the TikTok guy was actually doing the TikToker section that was introduced in the summers. It made sense, but he was wherever he was. After that was announced, he was interviewing. And then um, no, no robot boy. They kept on interrupting the drama, the fun, the entertainment that was supposed to be. But I did not find any of that entertaining, funny or anything. Because they're both professionals that could have pulled it off nicely. You know, but at the end of the day, it also exposes who's a greater presenter and who's not. And we're not supposed to be choosing. We're supposed to be watching, enjoying and having that entertainment that is given to us. So you feel like if they had given it to this one and that one, maybe the summers would have a vibe. Maybe like, you know what I'm saying? So you're defeating the whole purpose of what the summers should have been all about. So that's what I found that, you know, much as it was great, but uh, certain things just do away with is them. Is there a necessity for four people to present the summons? Not really on stage. Hence, I'm saying, Guti, let Mpo maybe do the red carpet. Let uh, the two be the ones that do this. And then Lomunya present or like, you know, after they won, have this one speaking to the other guys. I don't know. There could have been a coordination as far as that is concerned. They could have coordinated that very, very well and let each presenter stand out. And not necessarily collaborate in a sense that we now have to compare who is better, who could have made the summers much greater and not. And obviously, album of the year went to someone that I don't know. <laughs> but not DJ Slow, but yeah. yeah, it was a DJ Slow situation. It was one of those things. And what happens? Is it a voted category? Album of the year, or is it a judged category? It's always category? a voted uh, category, isn't it? I know song of the year is usually voted. Yeah, but it was one of those things, man. Angas, according to Shotayo, you know, and how they paid um, different <laughs> artists. <laughs> oh, Hug Soul. Hug <laughs> Soul. <laughs> like, and then? <laughs> so, unfortunately, because I was alone in the room, you know, like, I had no one to ask. And then, then Kimang, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and then missing out on anything. <laughs> No man, stop it. Well, yeah, and I mean, me look, eh? I don't know. <laughs> I but the bottom line is, um, there's a reason why 
brands and why certain things no longer have the value because of the controversy that surrounds Amas Hamas. Mm. There are no corporate companies that want to come on board. And it was visible again on Saturday because remember, like MTN would come on board, anyone, but it makes it bigger. It makes it more professional, you know. Then you know it's going to be the yellow carpet. It's not going to be the red carpet. Like, you know, so you go through all of those moments that are mm. well coordinated, well put, and because brands are involved, there'll be more money for artists as well. Something that I heard, this is alleged, right? Allegedly, nominees were the only ones that they were catering for. So if you were bringing a plus one, a plus one, Yako Bezos Patalela, they were only catering, catering for you, in a sense, for you to be inside, for you to have a seat. If it was an a plus one, your plus one to be next oh, to man. you, but you and that's why a lot of artists were not there. Like a lot of people that won summers, they were not inside that auditorium. So now what's the value? What's the point of mm. not having people standing up, collecting awards, giving us their speech, telling us about their journey, how impressed or how unimpressed they are of winning. Like whatever it is that they feel like expressing themselves on upon winning that award. But it wasn't there. So what's the point? Yeah, I, I think it's interesting because as you... As you tabulate some of the issues, um, I I'm seeing opportunity. Like it's like ah, you could have a parallel uh, award uh, which has more glitz, more glam, more sponsors. Mm -hmm. uh, just like the metros were trying. I don't know if they still exist. The metros well, I get it because of COVID. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could have even with the complaints about e e idols. I mean, my mind functions in a way that's oh, that's an opportunity. Uh, can have a huge idols competition on YouTube uh, mm. that's well funded and sponsored by so many different brands. You know, it's a world of opportunities. I know, like the Summer Awards, you can't take away the fact that they are almost the official mm -hmm. uh, one because they are recognized by the recording industry of South yeah. Africa um, and stuff Urisa, like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, so <clears throat> it's like you you're winning against your peers. But if if I think if there's an erosion of the trust to a point where people who don't know when. Mm. Uh, I'm not saying at the same time that people who should win are people who we know. Of course, it should be about the quality of the music and the impact of the digital streams and stuff like that on the radio play. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is that uh, if there are categories on, um, if there are, um, what is this, requirements on each category that they look at, uh, you should look at the quality of the music, uh, the impact of the music uh, streams, uh, radio play and stuff like that if that's what we collectively are agreeing to which we've done uh, in the last 20 something years uh, so yeah I mean for me it's a, it's, a, it's a world of opportunities if the summers are fucking themselves up <laughs> it's time for someone else to step up that's mm -hmm. why when we were speaking about it remember when we were talking about the DSTV whatever whatever sure, so much, yeah. uh, maybe they could widen it so that they include music a mm. lot more uh, because we, I, we what we were arguing at the time was about those ones, the multi-choice whatever awards, was that, are they just trying to give people who are on DSTV awards, like an excuse to award them? Mm. Because many of them that won, or people that were presenting or hosting, uh, were people that are already on DSTV platforms, mm -hmm. doing this, doing that, doing that show. So maybe you legitimize. And sometimes when you invade people's lands and houses and homes, you, you invade them with machetes and you, you, you let them know that you mean business. Mm. You know? And you you do a takeover, a hostile takeover, you know. So maybe it's multi choices opportunity to do a hostile takeover. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and I'm sure musicians would easily go where they look. Uh, they feel as though they are appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. But widen the scope of uh, how many awards can be won by musicians. Mm -hmm. Maybe have a night with musicians and have a night with actors. You know, it's a it's a world of opportunities. If the summers are messing up, they are messing up. Of course, someone else could make the counter argument that. Every country needs an award for musicians, which is almost like a government-backed award, like something that we generally accept. Which is, these are the main official awards. Mm -hmm. But if the summers are messing up, then, I mean, come on, man. Like you, I, I, You're not the first person who was telling me that a lot of the people that won uh, were not there. Now, that's a different story from 2002, mm. right? 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, where we knew Gutu Mandoza was going to be there. Mm. Uh, we knew Gutu Umzo Lister was going to be there. All of the biggest musicians in gospel, Rebecca Malupo was going to mm -hmm. perform first uh, from gospel and stuff like that. So 
uh, maybe musicians will hop on to the idea of okay let's go to these ones because mm. these ones are, are our now new main awards mm. yeah well um i don't know i i actually i would have thought that they they, they do well they do better than, mm. than 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 what is out there because uh, it's 28 years i mean it has to count for something yeah but over and above um it's the history behind it it came in at a time where South Africa, you know, was not really having many of these awards. They were one of the first to actually set the trends as far as sure. awards are concerned. Because 28 years ago, I mean, like, what did we know? And they grew so nicely that they became a household thing that if you are not attending, you definitely want to sit and watch because you're also participating in your couch, celebrating like the art that South Africa is. And I mean, one can also argue and say they are the South African Grammys and everybody looks forward to the Grammys. But here we are 28 years later, the value has uh, depreciated and it depreciates not because of what the summers are, but because of the organization itself, because of how when things are evolving, people refuse to evolve at times or allow like, a certain generation to take over. That's why it's important to collaborate because when we bring in different ideas together, we're likely to find a solution that would be workable and more generational because it cannot be that what I did 28 years ago is going to be functional in tra like 28 years later. Yeah. It has to move. It has to go. And um, shout out to, 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 to the Ama Piano guys because they've got their own Ama Piano Awards that they do because they were not recognized when they started coming into the music industry. And because of that, I mean, there's a, there was a lot of hate for people that have been in the music industry for so long. to say, What are they doing and all of those things. But instead of them, like you're saying, arguing and fighting, doing all sorts of videos to say we are not included in this, we want to be inclusive and, and, and they stepped away and did their own thing and they had sponsors as well so we'll see how far that one yeah. goes because they are coming up this year so i guess it's that thing you it's sad that there's so much history that is behind this i mean there's so many fallen artists that were recognized and forever be part of the memories that we have when it comes to the summers but now we can't have that anymore because of what the, the stability that came with the summers the controversy that came around it because people would vote and the rightful people that deserved to win based on the fact that they had the airplay and people were voting it looked legit because people were voting. Yeah. But then as soon as now, the politics of the stomach starting to play out, that's when we lost out on everything. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, <clears throat> I mean, like you were making an example with the Grammys, every country, I think the Americans have American Music Awards. Mm. You know, um, every country has its own awards to recognize musicians because the Ama Piano Awards are a niche I mean, how many different things can you really have on a full lineup for two hours? Mm -hmm. uh, best song, best artist, best group, best vocalist, best, vocalist, best, vocalist, beat. best remix. Yeah. But you, it will still feel like it's an Ama Piano Award just expanding itself. Mm -hmm. Best producer, best yeah. this, you know. But when it's when it's uh, an industry wide music award, you know that it will cater for rock, contemporary, jazz. Um, Afro pop, ama piano, quieto, hip hop, uh, male, female, um, and so on and so forth, and, mm -hmm. and and of course recognizing the legend legendary musicians as well. So you still need that institution, but I'm saying like it's a world of opportunities. If mm -hmm. if that thing is dragging its feet and it's not improving, someone else comes in, mm -hmm. uh, close close that gap, and do not uh, niche awards like Ama Piano. Uh, there's another one that's called Ama Piano and Kwaito Awards, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if it's the same thing, but it's, uh, it's it bundles Kwaito and Ama Piano uh, on the same awards night, um, you know, uh, which is a niche thing. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily an industry wide thing. I think there's an opportunity for someone else uh, to to revive the glitz and the glam because I agree with you. When we used to watch those things, you know, we we were looking forward to to seeing our favorite musicians mm -hmm. perform and win and mm. if they didn't win at least you got to see them perform exactly um, and it becomes a glitz and glam thing and the the reason why i was asking you whether or not there's a need for four people to host is because i remember when cabello hosted them and mm. cabello is one of my favorite art, uh, quite yeah, artists yeah, you love this guy um i remember <laughs> when he hosted them and he caused so much drama uh when he attacked shua uh, and stuff like that but it's, uh, maybe my point is that one man or woman could do that. Mm. You know, you don't necessarily mm. need four people. 
Uh, but yeah, it's a younger generation. I've never even seen a red carpet. I, I don't know why I would watch that. Mm. As my type of consumer, as the person I am, like, like ah, why would I watch that? But then there's a red carpet aspect to American Oscars and shit like that. Maybe we're just uh, taking that. Um, but anyways, your president, you were telling me that he was speaking. <laughs> what was that about? He wasn't really speaking. He was... Um he went to Parliament, obviously, for a Q&A. Yeah. Well, he was meant to go to Parliament, right, uh, where he will be in attendance with the members of Parliament, where there were questions that are relating to the state of the country. So it was not necessarily on him. So it was a matter of what is the state of the country and um, all sorts of questions that will come from political parties as far as um, the state of affairs is concerned, the economy state of this country, the illegal... Um, foreign system and what are we doing about it the health system so it was literally everything that the as a prison so it's just one of those account accountability sessions yeah. that um they were supposed to have where he was supposed to be in parliament but for some reason he wasn't in parliament that, for me like it's just like okay why are you not there was it not a question and answers uh, session as, yes as it, it always, was as always there are Yes, but so then he was not there? there and then everything had to be done electronically. Only he can answer as to why he was not there. And I mean, there were questions, obviously, the Palapala gate was questions that we were going to be asked. But then everything that he said was nothing because he could not give straight answers to a lot of things that he was supposed to answer to. So when he was asked about... Um, a state of affairs in this country. I mean, he'll tell you that are supposed to answer for it, but we are working on it. There's a task team as well, because that's something that he's been good at doing. His Yo, he's been so good ever since his term as president of this country to form task teams, but we don't see the results of the task teams. We don't necessarily get to have reports from those. They report to him, but like, are we not supposed to know as the funders of those task teams? Because as taxpayers, that's the automatically makes us the funders of those particular projects but we don't get to be actually uh, uh, consulted on the fact that maybe because we are failing on this and that like it's things that he came up with you know there was no consultation process that said because there's a lot of crime there's estates essay that has given us a master's to say these are the perpetrators of this crime and this crime and this crime therefore we are going to have amatas teams and then let us then mm -hmm. decide or, or whoever you know go back to the parliament and say can we put this in motion can be something that we will exercise on because there's so many other things that we are lacking on as far as this country is concerned but yes crime stands out the education system stands out the health system stands out and those are the three things that at least if we can have them right we would be in a far better place as a country but still instead of you now looking at what is a priority for this country you now form this 20 the latest one makes it 26 task teams that have been formed by the president of this country ever since he took over. But what is the purpose of it? What is the end goal of it? And will those task teams be there if he leaves or vacates his position right now? It's so a, what was the it's purpose of it? It's a clever way of buying time. Like, yeah. yeah. That's it. Like, it's a clever way of buying time. There's nothing mm. much. Yeah, no. There's nothing much like... You saw him do what he did in Marikana, so uh, if he can do that, uh, there's nothing else. Mm. The world is his oyster from that point. If he can yeah, do that not and, true, no, and eh? not be consequenced. Mm. Uh, so even the pala pala thing, because it's like there's investigations going on, let's allow the law to take its place. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. that's it. That's you know? Yeah, is it delaying text? But I, I, I now have emotions to invest in instead of my position. Because mm. the thing is, it's like sometimes these things are... Um, as no the politics, sometimes bang at film. It's like we're actually watching a movie mm. and we are participating in the spectacle of the being of the the movie as it gives us ups and downs and ups and downs. And then another bad guy comes along and then another four years, ups and downs and mm. ups and downs. Yeah, well, and then we die obviously eventually when we are sixty to seventy or eighty if we are mm. fortunate to live for that long. So I go to the ones like this guy has found a tactic to buy time and, mm. and that's what that's exactly what he's doing. And in the same breath, uh, in the same way that people have a problem with uh, living in a banal world, choosing Casper or AKA, mm -hmm. the same people uh, we have people who fit that uh, stupid profile as well. Of okay, because I liked Zuma, I hate Ramaphosa. Before, because I hate Ramaphosa, I like Zuma. 
Uh, you don't even have to participate in that. You just see him for what he is. Mm. Yeah, but we president. If I don't buy any, we put it by seven zapans go ANC. That's it. Yeah, but he just speaks better than the other ones. Yeah, <laughs> that left before. Not necessarily. I mean, yeah, he speaks uh, English with from his muscles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other than that, <laughs> yeah, and I mean, EFF did what they normally do as far as the parliament seating is concerned what happened uh, the usual you know they were disrupting the proceedings and i mean it always will then delay when the proceedings are supposed to begin because they will raise issues they'll talk about his big nose that's why i'm just remembering <laughs> the big nose element of it because it's like yeah ramaphosa yeah, with the big nose and i'm like but what does that have to do with anything you know yeah, and you're yeah. discriminating these guys eh? I mean, <laughs> you know we can't cut them off yeah, so I mean, it's a matter of. But now, but they're playing a role. Yeah, but yeah. feel him. Like, mm, now, but they're mm. playing a role and they're playing it very well. And the Banana Republic that we are slowly becoming, because I mean, everybody's contributing it's not a banana towards Republic. that. It's a, it's an illusion that people sell you that would okay, Tina Squintala and Naba no, They are both playing for the same team. Mm. Yeah, but which is the maintenance of the current system. And then they need to give you the illusion that they are radical, so they don't. Uh, they are fi- these ones are fighting against these ones, but um, the maintenance of the same system, mm. uh, the economy being in the, in the hands of white people. Um, yeah, it's just role. <laughs> That's why it's like it's consistent. It's consistent in messaging your task team, yeah, mm-hmm. because he's found a delay tactic. Okay, I'm gonna do this or a commission, mm. and then the EFF now nah, you in a consistency in terms of its disruption, mm. yeah. But and I, I don't think that's wrong or right. They're, those niggas are just playing a role, mm-hmm. all of these guys are just playing a role. Mm. It, it's the joke is on the people that think that that is something like it's a spectacle, um, maybe to, to engage upon to be to be emotionally invested in, yeah. But mm-hmm. if you see it for what it is, you will see, I get that up. Uh, mm. Because one thing that is constant is the system of white domination in this country and the economy being in their hands. And that's it. Like, that's it. That's the basic foundation uh, upon which you should be seeing this. Mm. Yeah, about the games. And that's why Jonathan Hazen is probably going to be the president of the country in 2024 because um, the Democratic Alliance is not going to lose a significant number of the vote. What will happen is that the ANC will lose it. Um, you know, they will dip below 50% and we will get the country, um, which is still playing into the hands of whiteness. Uh, we'll get the country of uh, a government of national unity. Nothing is going to happen. People are going to um, quarrel with each other. No laws will be passed to mm. advance the country forward. The status quo will be maintained. Mm. Um, it's just another delay tactic for the next 10, 20, 30 years. And then we'll have someone else who we like or dislike. Yeah. So um, Tita was he there? Like did he did he but did he oh Ramapos was, no, he in he was virtual. Oh, no, okay. he was virtually <laughs> so how those did he disrupt uh, was he <laughs> no, the only one? There were people in okay. parliament. He was the <laughs> only one that was not in parliament. Okay. And those were the things that they were asking for. Where is this guy with the big nose? Why is he not here? <laughs> But yeah, speaking of politics and how things have been unfolding of late, yeah, yeah. cope is not coping. <laughs> <laughs> it was visible the other day, last week, when um, U- Musi- Musi- U- he's president. no longer the terror that he was known to be. Um, he was... Okay, so firstly, cope has not been active as far as politics are concerned in the last two years. Never mind the COVID situation, mm. but in the past few years... What does that mean? It means that um, the seats that they occupied in parliament... Do they not have two seats? One. Or? They currently have one seat in oh, parliament okay. right now. <laughs> from 36 to 28 to 5, and now it's one. Yeah, I'm just trying to check the age guy, Musi <coughs> is and he's just recovered from prostate cancer. He's 74 years old. Yes, see. 74. Mm. And he's just recovered from prostate cancer. And he still wants to be involved in a dying party politics. Yeah. Hi, guys. What was the press conference about? I, I saw that. All uh, right. So the press conference was mainly to speak about him. Remember, he's suspended by his political party, so, yeah. COPE. So he was basically um, telling the press that he's not going anywhere. And the suspension is null and void, and he's still here. He's just recovered from 
prostate cancer so he was actually saying that no he's just recovered from prostate cancer and secondly that he does not recognize the suspension <laughs> thereof and he is still the, the commander prison. in chief as a, a, a cope now as he was trying to do that now there were two things that were visible there that the people of cope do not know each other Remember, but all of you at some point will convene on a national level yeah. where you will know this one is a delegate or this one is a PEC member, RC member, yeah. and all those uh, um, structures that you are there. Provincial so leaders. you will know who the provincial leaders or the structural leaders are yeah. because of you would have been voted. And when we do convene at a national level, we'll know, it's okay, no, good lego, we to push at this agenda. But you know each other, yeah. right? The bottom line is you'd know each other. So a membership has declined throughout the years. And that has been visible through the voting system that has been visible in the seats that they've kept on losing throughout ever since COPE was formed in parliament. So if there were 36 when COPE first came out, then they decreased to 25. Then from 25, imagine that margin to five. And now they're sitting on one seat in parliament. <laughs> how does that happen? And now how do you want to come out and say you want to be the next, you want to be the president of a party that only has one seat in parliament? You have not participated in politics. We don't know what the P is. Oh, maybe P is a bit far because that's a provincial structure. The REC, the regional levels, they don't know themselves. The zonal structures, they don't know each other. What if so, they don't exactly exist in the that's way that the we thing. imagine them? Exactly, because they don't exist. That's the only reason why they don't know each other. Because I.E. Kulentole. And now the people, as they were fighting each other, okay, fine, wait. So as we come in with the story to say... um he called a press conference with the people that don't know each other, right? But obviously, Tina Vantube Media will always respond to AMA media invites because we want to know, it's okay, Tara, you are suspended. Why and are you calling us? Drama. You know, right. of course, there'll be drama that we'll want to cover as well. And uh, people were there, SAPC was there, um, Newsroom Africa was there, and all these other big news media houses were there. And as he was trying to conduct the press conference, <laughs> The, I don't know who that guy is, but he came from wherever. All he was trying to do was to reach the microphones. But instead, they thought he was going for Terra himself. And then, some bodyguard, or who those people are, then they went for him. And then we saw a fist fight, you know. Papa Kabula Nalapayana, something that, you know, we've been looking forward to. Because honestly, I'm looking forward to the day that thing happens in Parliament. I really That's am a looking forward thing to, to say that. No, I Why am. Why would you want to see 70 something year old people beat each other? It's like the slowest uh, Because fist that's ever. the only time then we'll respect. Yes, after school is after school, right? Mm. It has to be decided. But it's the same you because you live in a conservative country with people <laughs> with predictable behaviors. Mm. When that happens, there's no Tekaram in Parliament, Banana Republic, because you guys are predictable. It's a very predictable country. No, but I think we Nizoba, should get to, in the same to way that. that they they go at EFF when mm. EFF is disruptive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. I I would. It's it, you'll just lose PR points with South Africans. You must know that there's a way you speak to them. Mm. There's a way you behave in front of them. Yeah. You could be robbing them, but as long as you smile in front of them, mm. I shame they will endear you. Like they will love you. You could be robbing them, kidnapping them. You could do a lot of things to them. But as long as you smile in their face with South Africans, mm. they will love you. Like mm -hmm. you will be an angelic figure. Mm -hmm. You throw in Mshinwam as a song and smile. Um, you know, or you throw in a song called Tumamina. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> as, as long as you do that, uh, you will endear yourself in their hearts. But uh, yeah, so it's, 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 it's an interesting one because I saw that and I, I watched the press conference as well. Um, what what is there to fight for genuinely? Because there's only one seat, and it's a room full of at least five to ten men. Um, and mm. when a party has one seat, only one of those men could potentially occupy that seat. So what is there to fight for? Maybe mm. for context and the young people who, who may not understand even the context here, Congress of the People, is that when Tabombek was um, dismissed. Uh, or was recalled as um, yeah in 2008 when he was recalled October. as a South African pre as a as a president of the ANC, um, 
they were a group of ANC leaders because they had not seen that happening in the democratic dispensation. Mm -hmm. They thought that the ANC was going down the drain because they had been they had recalled a president one year before his final term um, because he had lost in Bulugwan in 2007. Mm -hmm. So the reason why uh, Ikopo was successful is because all of these things happened in the lead up to the 2009 elections. So it's like 2008, the ANC does that and then it, it, it gets <clears throat> momentum, it gains momentum. Um, uh, to, to towards 2009 because what happens is cabinet ministers, mm -hmm. uh, some of them actually leave the African National Congress to start the formation year, yeah. year Congress of the People. Mm -hmm. You know, Abomba uh, Zimashilowa, Musiwa Likota, who is the current president of the Congress of the People, was a the cabinet suspended minister. Current president. Or he's suspended, yeah. oh, sorry, yeah. Well, he was a cabinet minister of the African National Congress. He went to prison in Robben Island, mm. um, representing the African National Congress. So that's why COPE uh, was such a, uh, was seen as a potential... Opposition uh, party. Yeah, yeah. But in the first election, they, they, they I think these elections were so, uh, was so... was a wash, watershed moment in terms of how we understand our people because we thought, uh, or a lot of people thought, as they projected what would happen, uh, mm. we thought that they could significantly get like 20% because so many people and so many mm. leaders are leaving. But I think in the first election, they must have won somewhere in the region of 6% of votes. Seven. I think it was 7.3%. Yeah. Yeah. Which was not a significant... It's a significant <clears throat> number for a new party, but mm. not a party that has so many recognized faces mm. with such momentum and funding behind it at the time. So then you get a shock of your life in 2009. It's like, whoa, okay, cool. So in spite of everything else that's happening here, the ANC is still... 62% uh, of the national vote um, and the new party which we thought would get like 15 to 20%. This repeats itself when the EFF uh, mm. forms in 2012 and they run in for the national election in 2014 and they only get like 10 to 12% around that region. Mm. Then you get in a clearer understanding of who South Africans are mm. um, and how conservative they are. Or you can also <coughs> infer that uh, there's some vote rigging here because uh, there must be uh, the, like there must be a shaking up of the ground because so many ministers are leaving and so many people are disgruntled because so many people are unhappy with what happened mm -hmm. with the Tabombeg or uh, with the new formation of the EFF. But still, the cap is like seven, ten percent, eleven percent. So nothing significant happens, even though when you're observing, mm -hmm. you see what is something significant should be happening. Mm -hmm. So on one hand, you could say that our people really are still attached to the ANC. Um, on the other hand as well, factually, we knew that gradually every year our people were deciding not to vote. Mm. So that the last election, which year are we in now? 2022? So the last election in 2019, the national yeah. election, there was somewhere between 5 and 8 million people who were eligible to vote. They chose but not they to not vote. Mm -hmm. you know. So instead of them taking their vote to another party, even in 2024, what will happen is that uh, uh, six or 7 million people will be joined by 3 million more, and we might be approaching 10 million people who are not voting, mm -hmm. um, as, which is a way of exercising um, their they choice. Right. Yeah, yeah, well, um, so it's, it's an, it's, we live in an interesting country. So just the, the context of ECOB and why they, they are a news item is because there was such a potential... Um, Opposition party. Exactly, yeah. and, and, and they had all-stars. Of course, mm. you can be an all-star team without ideology, you're not going to go yeah. anywhere. Yeah. And I think it's not just that. It's a matter of um, when I was a bull on the other side, I'll still want to become a bull here. Because yep. immediately when COPE was formed, Mbazima Shiloa and uh, Terra Likota, they started having a go at each other. I think that was the demise of COPE early on. That's what led them to lose the many seats that they continuously lost as time went on. Because now it was a matter of, but I was in exile. And like, you know, so you want to start bringing in the unnecessary things as for when leadership is supposed to be what prevails at that time. What makes one a better leader? What will make the people come to me? Remember, it's all those charisma that people have, like you're saying, that song and whatnot. And now Terra was not necessarily coming out to express that. But what he was doing, he was trying to counter the ANC, but at the same time, counter his own. That was Umbazima Shiloa and wanting to emerge as the better leader. And ultimately, that's what he became. But there was a lot of contestation yeah. when his leadership came about. 
when Umbazima, there were courts. So, I mean, imagine we're trying to run away from this ANC. We're saying here is an alternative. And then when you go to that alternative, you find that the house is not in order. Mm. You're not even inside the houses yet, yeah. but you encounter those at the gate. One you thing, turn sorry, back. Just, I, I remember as well, <coughs> both, both the COPE and the EFF, I'm sorry to cut you, is, is, is that never underestimate um, the ANC's potential to infiltrate uh, emerging political parties. Mm -hmm. So every time those political parties emerge, particularly if they break away from the ANC, uh, you can make a logical um, assumption that at least 10% of the, of those people mm -hmm. uh, come from the ANC and yeah. they're just uh, agents. They are double agents mm -hmm. and you can't tell, unfortunately. All of us, when we are in a yeah. meeting and we're, we are planning this new political party, mm -hmm. um, we, we sound like we want to go to the same direction, yeah. same destination, but they will have like 10%, I would argue, mm. uh, that 10% of them are just ANC agents. Just yeah. to hear and smell and feel, what, is this thing real? And mm. then they go back to the ANC. That's why it makes sense that eventually some of the people who had COPE went back to the ANC. Mm. Some people were, were, were the F EFF. EFF. They either went to other parties yeah. or started in other parties or mm. they went back to the ANC. Because so. as, uh, uh, as far back as the UDM was formed, because it was also a breakaway party from the ANC as well. Like it's, oh yeah, Olomisa was, was, was formed. Yeah. The ANC. He was yeah. back then and then he formed his own way back. I mean, like he's the one that set the trend rather. You know, I'm a breakaway party. Maybe at that time the it PAC, was a bit taboo. So the Pan Africanist movement yeah. breaks away from the ANC. But I, I get what you're saying. In recent times. So it's it's been like 94. a continuous cycle. Yeah. So it was the UDM, it was the PAC, then COPE, EFF. And yeah. So people are just basically following suit. Because as well as um Kanakima. Um, Kenny McKenzie's came on. Oh, Gaten, uh, Gaten McKenzie, Gaten McKenzie also came from the ANC. Patriotic so it's all Alliance. patriotic alliance. I don't they know. All was, came. He, was he coming from there? Yeah, he was coming from the ANC. He didn't just wake up. He, w he was part of the ANC when EFF formed um, EFF. Yeah. Then they went and joined the EFF, but they didn't stay long in the EFF. Yeah. Like, um, I think they didn't even last a year and then they quickly pulled out. They paused a bit and then formed E Patriotic they Alliance. Do do what? They pulled out. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's been a continuous um, cycle of the pulling out so game. So don't underestimate uh, the power of the African National Congress mm. uh, to send double agents in your new party. Of course, it's always going to be like that. And because I mean, those people are trained. Uh-huh. Uh, from a... <laughs> uh, so those people are trained. Uh, they Somehow their training did not... To, uh, training them to dismantle white power but at least mm, but now what's the point of now because the problem is enemy yet right as soon as we um victorious and we've conquered our enemy you and i become automatic enemies because now what we went out to go fight for it's over it's done so because but now they I'm never even see. began to fight white power i'm just trying to be sarcastic that mm. all the tactics that they learned one thing that they did not learn, they just mm. dismantle white power. Yeah. When they are in political power, mm. transfer the economy uh, to black people um, and take the land, give it to its rightful owners. Mm. Uh, of all the True. things that they learned in exile and, and, and they learned in Russia or they learned in China or they learned uh, in other were. African countries, yeah. Goma, Tanzania, and no Uganda, they mm. never learned how to dismantle uh, whiteness. But yeah, massive. Uh, legend, um, yeah. Any last words? Thank you guys for joining us. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are if so you're still tired, around here, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've done an hour. Um, yeah, I think that's sufficient for our audience. We've done. An yeah. hour. Thank you guys for being here. No, absolutely, man. Um, but a big shout out um, to two people, particularly on an inspirational level. Utebe Makuku. Um, partnered yeah. with adidas he's a fashion designer from south africa that partnered with adidas and currently with the u.s open all the tennis players that are sponsored by adidas are wearing tebe makuku outfits oh, nice one. so that's a big big one for south africans i mean like we'll speak about the black coffees of this world we'll speak about but you know here's one of our own doing such great things and he had a lunch on um i think a couple of weeks ago where people were dressed in robes just to celebrate his partnership with adidas and it's not just adidas Ayala. It's now the bigger umbrella, yeah, Adidas. Mm -hmm. And by so 
um, doing. We're saying to people, like, keep on dreaming and keep on doing your thing as best as you can do that. And another shout out goes to um, LeBron James, who just together with Drake acquired shares at AC Milan. Oh, nice one. So, yeah, and he's already got a stake in Liverpool in anyway. Liverpool. Yeah, I've, so, you know, I've been asking myself what that means, actually. How significant is mm-hmm. that? Like, what percentage and stuff like that? Because I, I did read about the Liverpool one and this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, AC Milan. How significant yeah. is that? I don't know. But for me, as an athlete, because they play and some of them disappear. And we never get to know where they are, what they're doing. And we've had uh, people like... Ooh, Magic Johnson, um, yeah. that came out and he became like a businessman after that. So what 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 I want to say is that at least become an athlete, leverage on the brand equity when you still can have it. And that's what he's done and he continuously to do so. And more so outside of his sporting code and going outside of EE basketball and then doing something else. And Drake also coming on board Crazy. as... Um, a musician that's also investing in sports as well because now we need to diversify in our crafts and what better way to do that as a person that played in the sports but diversify in other sporting codes as well champagne puppy yeah so it's 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 yeah so those are the two things that stood out for me last week all right there you so, go yeah there you go thank you guys Yo, uh, go back uh, to sleep the only, sorry <laughs> And yeah, that's how we end our show. This is the episode that we gave you guys. Thank you so much for staying in, listening and commenting, subscribing and liking our comments. We'll see you guys next week when Mr. T Utulo is going to be joining us. He could not join us today, but he'll certainly be back next week. And how we sign off or how rather... Yeah, the team has allowed me (laughs) to remind you guys to never, ever, ever touch anything with half your heart. And that's it. Boom. (laughs) Who <laughs> <laughs>